Most fish live in either fresh or salt water, but salmon are anadromous fish. They spend part of their life in each. Salmon begin in fresh water as small eggs in the cold mountain rivers and streams of Idaho. They settle into clean gravel where cold water can flow over them, providing the eggs with oxygen. Within a few months, the eggs begin to develop into tiny fish and emerge from the gravel. These tiny fish are called fry. They dine on microscopic water animals called zooplankton. The little fish will stay in their birth streams for a year or two until they grow to be almost as long as your hand. Biologists call these smolts. They're kind of the teenagers of the salmon world. Their bodies are changing and they're ready to try new things, but they're not yet adults. As spring rolls around, these smolts get the urge to travel. They head into the flow of the river current and begin a long journey to the ocean, riding the rush of melted mountain snow that creates spring runoff water. Before dams were built on the Columbia and Snake Rivers, this long journey took only about a week. Now, they must pass through eight large dams and the slow pools of water created by those dams. These days, the journey can take several months. Along the way, their bodies change to adapt from fresh water to salt water. This process is called smoltification. Those that survive spend the next few years feeding in the ocean. By the time they have the urge to return to Idaho, they've developed into huge adult salmon. Once again, they negotiate the eight dams and then smell, that's right, smell their way home, back to the stream where they were born, hundreds of miles from the ocean. It's a pretty amazing feat. Now the whole process starts over. The adult female salmon begins to build a nest in the gravel at the bottom of the stream. She fans and shovels the gravel with her tail to form a depression for her eggs. These nests are called reds. A male hovers nearby, playing court to the female, waiting for her to spawn so he can fertilize the eggs with his sperm. Soon the adults will die, but the life cycle isn't finished. Their rotting bodies are important because they provide food for predators and scavengers like bears and ravens. Moreover, critical nutrients are released into the river as the carcasses decompose. So why is there so much concern about Idaho's wild salmon? Well, because they're disappearing. At one time, thousands upon thousands of Chinook and Sockeye salmon return to Idaho each year. Now there are years when not one sockeye salmon makes it back to Idaho to spawn. The main problem is getting those teenagers or smolts to the sea. Since that journey takes so much longer now, most of Idaho's salmon smolts never make it through the dams to the ocean. And of course, this means there are fewer adults to come back home to spawn. And if this trend continues, someday our salmon river may be just the name for a ghost fish one that no longer can be found in Idaho waters.